Okay, so in this problem we're told, what is the lift in Newtons due to Bernoulli's principle on a wing of area 88 meters squared if the air passes over the top and bottom surfaces at speeds of 280 meters per second and 150 meters per second respectively? So let's go ahead and imagine that this wing right here has an area of 88 meters squared. So you can imagine the bottom of it, it's not in 3D, but the bottom of this essentially 88 meters squared and same for the top. And so we know it's going to have velocity on the top, which I'm going to call VA of 280 met uh, meters per second. And so you can imagine it passing over like this. And then on the bottom, uh, same thing with just a different value. And so I'm going to call that VB. And so the first thing you have to understand is uh, kind of like a rule. So the higher the velocity that this wind is going to pass through, the lower the pressure is going to be. So we know that the top is going to experience, or the pressure here is going to be lower. So we'll just call it low pressure. And then we can say high pressure for the bottom because the velocity is slower. So obviously the pressure in this region is going to be uh, greater than the pressure in this region because the velocity is lower here than there. So we have high pressure and low pressure. And so another thing you should know is that pressure equals force over area. So that's the formula as a result of that. And so you should know the force uh, if I multiply these two values. Uh, force equals pressure times area. So in this case, uh, notice that there's going to be a lift force generated by this pressure. So the pressure is going to generate a force on this area here because of the pressure. And then the low pressure is going to do the same thing except for downwards. Uh, but notice that uh, the pressure on the bottom is much higher. Therefore, the force, right, you could call this F1 and this F2, F1 is much greater. Therefore, uh, the force that's going to be exerted on this area here is the difference between them. So F1 minus F2, uh, and just notice that that's going to be upwards. Like this is going to what's going to lift, right, the lift force. This is what's going to be it. So it's basically the difference between these two. And so uh, we know force equals uh, pressure times area. And so uh, we're going to use that in order to solve for this. So basically what we're going to use is Bernoulli's equation. And so you should know uh, Bernoulli's equation, the formula for it, is P1. And so uh, actually I'm going to call this A and B. So this is area A, this is area B. So basically it relates the pressure at both points. So uh, right, we have P A plus one half I'm just writing out Bernoulli's equation for each of these points, right, relating them, plus rho V A squared plus rho G H A equals P2 at the pressure, or P B plus one half rho V B squared plus rho G H B. So basically this just relates uh, the pressure right, at these two points, right, based on the conservation of energy, it's kind of like that, right, we have kinetic, and then we have potential. Um, but yeah, so what we're going to do is use this to solve. So we know the force, right, or so you know, force, or sorry, pressure equals force over area. Let me write that over here again. So pressure equals force over area. And what we want is the force. So we can multiply both sides by A. So F equals A P. And so if we do the change in the pressure, right, if we can find that, then we'll get the change in the force. So the change in the force is area times the change in the pressure. And so if we can solve for uh, the pressure, we can get the change in the force, right, which is F1 minus F2, which, as I said before, is the lift force that we're looking for. So what we're going to need is this change in pressure, multiply that by the area, and that'll give us our lift force. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, and then this is how we're going to find the change in pressure by using this formula. Right, so we're just relating both of these points. And so the first thing you got to notice is rho g h for both of them are going to be the same because their heights are the same. So it's basically negligible. You can imagine their height, right? There's not much of a change. Therefore, we can just eliminate it. They're basically the same. So all you have is pa plus one half rho v a squared, right? Which is the velocity of your wind at point a is equal to the pressure at B plus one half rho V B squared. Right, and so what we want is the change in pressure. So I can move PB to the other side. Or sorry, I'm actually gonna move, yeah. So let me actually go ahead and do this. 
PA minus PB, just moving it to their side, and we'll move this to the other side. So one half uh, rho VB squared minus one half rho VA uh, squared. So we've got it like this. Uh, what we're going to want to do is, so notice the change in the force equals A, uh, A times the change in pressure. So this is the change in pressure here. So if we want to solve for it, it's A times this right here. So one half rho VB squared minus one half rho VA squared. And then, yeah, so what we want to do is really just plug in the things now. So uh, notice that the area is 88. They tell us that in the problem. So the surface area there is 88 times 1 half times rho. And so rho is the density of air. Uh, and you should just know it's 1.29 right, kilograms per meter cubed. So I'm just going to plug that in. Times VB, which is the velocity at point B, which was 150. So 150 squared minus 1 half, 1.29 times 280 squared. And so now it's really just a matter of plugging this in your calculator. So let me go ahead and do that. So 0.5 uh, times 1.29 times 150 squared minus 0.5 times 1.29 times 280 squared times 88. And so when you do this, you're going to get the change in force. And so in this case, I did um, PA minus PB. And so it's going to be negative. But notice that uh, the force is just the, or the force that's actually going to be exerted is just the absolute value of that. And the reason that is, is because as I said before, we subtracted, uh, let's go back, we did subtracted A minus B, but notice B is bigger. So Really, you would do, you probably should have done B minus A. It didn't really matter though, um, right? But just notice that the force is going to be positive. It's just upwards because all I found is the change because this force is much lower than this one. Uh, but yeah, so the force exerted is going to be three. So obviously it's negative, but I'm just going to make it positive. Uh, when you do this, it's negative, but I'm making it positive as I, because of what I explained before. Uh, but this is going to be a Newton's, right? Because we're dealing with... Uh, force here. So it's going to be equal to 3.17, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 3.17 times 10 to the 6 newtons. Uh, that's going to be your force, right? Because the change in the force is, or what we saw for was the change in the force between these two points, right? And the change in that, as I said before, was your upward force. And so, yeah, so basically the upward force in this problem is 3.17 times 10 to the 6 newtons. Uh, and yeah, so just a quick rundown, right? We have the velocity of air on both of these. We know higher the velocity means low pressure. So this is the lower pressure region. This is the high pressure. And then I know that, uh, right, the greater the pressure based on this formula, force equals pressure times area, it's going to be a greater force. Therefore, I know F1 is greater than F2, uh, which basically means the force is going to point upwards. And then to actually solve for it, we just basically found, uh, right, to find the change in the force, which is basically what the force is being applied, right? The, the net force is, uh, right, which is the change in the force, which equals area times the change in the pressure. And then I just had to find the change in the pressure between those two points. And then that's how we use Bernoulli's equation uh, to actually just go ahead and solve for that. And then we just plugged it in, and then we solved. And then obviously I got a negative value, but as I explained before, that's because I did... Um, I did this one minus this one, but that's only because this value is smaller. Uh, so I just took the positive or the magnitude of that. Uh, but yeah, so this right here is going to be your answer, 3.17 times 10 to the 6 newtons. Uh, and yeah, so hopefully you found this video useful.